Southern Africa, it's now time for some sports. And Piers, Sunday Olise, Nigeria's coach, problems on the pitch and off the pitch. Indeed, Peter, yes, thank you. Yes, the uh, Nigeria coach has apologised to his country's football federation after a recent video rant during which he hit out at his perceived critics. Sunday Olise, who was appointed last July, had come under pressure when he failed to guide Nigeria into the knockout stage of the recent African Nations Championship, or CHAN, in Rwanda. This is what he had to say. I am addressing this insanity that has befallen some of our critics. And I call it insanity because you must be insane to start seeking a plebiscite on the future of the national team's coach of Nigeria because we lost Chan. With all due respect, Chan is probably the least important to a tournament uh, that is held by CAF. CAF being African football's ruling body. Well, you get the idea of the rant today. Elise, who had been trending on social media in Nigeria after his outburst at the weekend, apologised to the Nigerian Federation Board. What has local reaction been? Well, the BBC's Olubashina Okaleji is in Lagos. Sunde Olise's apology has not really gone down well with fans here in Nigeria. The fans are still upset by the coach's latest outburst on YouTube, where he took on his employers as well as critics. Some are of the opinion that he lacks the mental strength as well as the experience to coach and also survive under pressure. He's crumbling, many says, and some have even come out to roundly criticize him for his decision to take to a letter instead of going back to YouTube to apologize to the entire populace. Nigeria have two crucial games against Egypt in March. Many fans are worried that a man crumbling under this pressure might not really translate the same confidence to his players on the pitch. To Egypt now, where great rivals Al Ahli and Zamalek are clashing as we speak. The league match is being held without fans, but Zamalek supporters have certainly been making themselves heard this week. On Monday, they gathered on the anniversary of an incident in which over 20 of their number died while attempting to attend a match in Cairo. The decision to protest was taken despite the threats of the head of Zamalek, who claimed he would open fire if fans approached the club's headquarters. So they went to a park instead. The BBC's Sally Nabil has the details. First of all, this is one of the few major gatherings that we have seen here in Egypt over the past two years since President Sisi came to power because there is uh, this demonstration law that prohibits people from organizing any huge gatherings without notifying or getting the approval from police authorities. So according to many commentators and the people on the social me media, they said that this proves that the spirit of the revolution is still alive. What we understand is that the people were trying to call for accountability. They believe that police forces are responsible. They say that they have uh, violently dealt with the, with the fans, they fired tear gas, and up till now nobody has been brought into justice from the police authorities. Well, in response, the police say the claims are unfounded and that it is the fans who caused chaos by storming the stadium. Finally, spare a thought for these cyclists trying to compete in a race in Spain. The third round of the Volta a la Marina had to be abandoned after incredibly strong winds forced riders off their bikes and vice versa. Gusts of up to 150 kilometres per hour were reported in Benidorm and unsurprisingly, the race was called off. And if it had happened, Peter, I think they would have truly been flying. I find that so funny. <laughs> I love the fact that they have to hold <laughs> the know, motorbike up. I know. Great stuff. Many thanks, Piers. And that's it from Focus in Africa. Thanks for watching from me and the team. Goodbye. It's crazy stuff.